start off by telling you that uh, I spent my entire working life uh, on the oil fields. I'm not sure how this qualifies me to be uh, an expert in any way about the, uh, about the industry or the, the, the fight that we're engaged in. But uh, anyway, the, the, uh, in the 40 years, I never came across the, the term a just transition. Uh, in fact, I never really understood or uh, confronted the issue of an energy transition. Uh, I was, I was uh, reactivated, I suppose, when the Extinction Rebellion uh, swarmed onto the streets a couple of years ago. And uh, they really shoved the issue in front of me. Um, the the, um, the issue that has been really, really well covered by the two previous speakers, you know, explaining the, the, the nature of the chemicals in the, in the hydrocarbon industries, the, le leaves not leaves anything out, but it leads immediately to, a dis you know, to the, to the uh, discussion about how, in fact, you tame these industries and transform them. And I suppose if I have any uh, claim to, to, to be uh, speaking to you, it's because I did spend all of my working life uh, involved with the trade union movement and in an attempt to organize the, the, the industry and, and uh, unite the, the uh, oil and gas workers on both sides of the North Sea, the, the Norwegian and Scottish North Sea. Not with enormous success, I, I, I might add. But it does raise the point, who, who, who is going to, to uh, take on big oil? And uh, Brian talks about the environmental movement. Yes, absolutely. I mean, the forces that Extinction Rebellion bring to the, the table, I think, are really, really important. Uh, young, dedicated uh, fighters who are prepared to break the law and prepared to pay the price. Um, but there is, of course, the, the oil workers themselves. I mean, and there are big lessons in the, in the labor history. Uh, if there is to be, there undoubtedly is going to be a transition. I mean, I think both previous speakers acknowledge that. And in fact, the industry itself now acknowledges that, that uh, the, the, the uh, primacy of oil, if you like, is on the way out. Especially in the North Sea, they already see the writing on the wall. And the, the North Sea workers obviously have got a role to play here. I mean, that role could be to sit passively and watch the, the industry dismantled from underneath their feet uh, and uh, end up uh, trashed, as indeed the miners were. Not that the miners uh, sat and allowed that to happen. They were, uh, uh, to my way of thinking, they were, uh, they were betrayed by the, the uh, labor and trade union bureaucracy. Uh, they were uh, hung out to dry, I suspect. And <clears throat> the, uh, the British, the uh, North Sea oil workers, are in grave danger of uh, following suit. Um, what, will, what will make this transition just is whether the, the oil and gas workers can be involved. And the first task will be to, to uh, get them to speak to each other. Now, the, the uh, platform, the, the London-based uh, oil watchdog, uh, in conjunction with Friends of the Earth, and uh, Greenpeace have recently carried out, uh, I think, an important survey. Uh, they're the very first people who have asked the oil workers to, to begin to, to uh, consider their own uh, situation and to, uh, uh, well, to, to begin a conversation, to speak to each other. And hopefully uh, we in Scotty 3 can carry that on. We're in the process of developing a, a website and forum to encourage these workers to, to continue the discussion that's been begun by the, by the uh, survey. Um, the, the, the other big, I'll say the other big lesson, a huge lesson that I've learned uh, from a lifetime in the oil fields is the ability of big oil 
to, uh, to control the news outflow from the oil fields. I mean, really, nothing, nothing comes into the public domain that hasn't first passed through the PR departments of the major oil companies. And this is a, it, 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 there has to be uh, a, a, a route for the workers to, to both express their opinions, but also to share news that's not controlled by the oil companies. And the, the, the media, the major media outlets are absolutely captured by big oil. And this, this is not going to be an easy fight, but it's an absolutely crucial fight to create uh, uh, to create a, a medium through which oil workers can get and uh, give news about the industry. Um, the, the, the shock that I got when I, when I began to understand or, or to begin to confront the issues of, of uh, uh, oil's role in global warming was when I began, I think it was Friends of the Earth who, who produced the, 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 the figures when the, in their, their sea change um, report. And, and it became obvious that right at the center of global warming is fossil fuel production. And right at the center of fossil fuel production, well, fossil fuel production for us in our patch is oil and gas. And there has been uh, the, the ability of the, the oil companies to deflect uh, the realities of that has a, has a huge, um, uh, has, has had big implications, certainly, even for Extinction Rebellion, who have managed really as a, a national organization not to confront oil and gas. So I don't know where I'm going to go here. I'm sort of petering out. Um, I think I've probably said enough. I haven't really given you, left you with anything. Anyway, can I just stop? <laughs>